marketing, factoring notes. We are factoring today and tomorrow. Two days of factoring review. So the first type of factoring that we're going to review is greatest common factor. Greatest common factor, uh, which we call GCF. And so we'll say, for example, if I was to factor 42x squared plus 14x, uh, some people look at this and they know exactly what's in common and some people don't. Um, and I want to make sure that you can do this if you are brain farting. And the cool thing is I didn't know that your calculators could do this um, until this year. I learned this this year. But your calculator actually has a neat little trick for finding the GCF. Does anyone know how these calculators can find the GCF? Nobody? Okay. So if you hit the math button, and I, uh, I believe it's number. Yes, it's number and then nine. So you're going to hit the math button, go over to the second column, which is number, and then hit nine. Or you can scroll down to number nine. It says greatest common denominator, but we're going to use it in a different context. So greatest common denominator. And we're going to look for the greatest common denominator or greatest common factor between 42 and 14. So I'm going to type 42, and then I'm going to type a comma, which is above the seven. 14. So you only have to do this if you're brain farting. If you look at those numbers and you know exactly what's in common, you don't need to do this. But a lot of people would be like, oh, 42, 14. What's in common between them is 7, but it's not. What's in common between them? 14. Eh? Okay. So the calculator can help you out there. It can do that for you. Okay, so that's, that's nice in a brain fart moment. So the GCF is 14, but it's not just 14. What else is it? X. We got to take the X out. All right, so 42 divided by 14. Three, yeah. So 3X. And then we had a 14X. We took out a 14X. And so what is left over? One. OK, so that's how we factor by taking out a GCF. Does that ring a bell? We remember doing that? Eh? Eh? You're like, we like to not respond. That's OK. It'll be awkward for a while. All right, next one is trinomials. These are going to be the ones you probably remember the most. Trinomials. And we're going to do where the a value equals 1. This is the most standard trinomial. So a trinomial is where you have ax squared plus bx plus c. This is a trinomial for a quadratic. And if the a value is 1, that means you just have x squared plus bx plus c. That's just like a regular quadratic, pretty standard, pretty simple. So I'm going to give you a quadratic with a GCF in it just so we can practice that. So here's our example. We're going to look at 3x squared plus 27x plus 60. Now, the calculator trick that I just taught you, it can't look at three numbers at the same time. It can only look at two numbers at the same time. So we couldn't do all three of these to see if there was a GCF, but we could pick like the two harder numbers. We could look at those. So if you want to use the calculator trick, you can. But if we look at the numbers, can you guys see what the GCF is between those three numbers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can see 3 divides into 3, 3 divides into 27, and then 3 divides into 60 as well. So we're going to take a GCF of 3 out. And for the first term, that leaves us with an x squared. 
What's 27 divided by 3? 9. And then what is 60 divided by 3? 20. Okay. And then after this, we have to do the typical trick with the trinomials, which is we have to look for what multiplies to 20 but adds to 9. What multiplies to 20 but adds to 9? 4 and 5. Okay, now let's say we weren't very good at our multiplication tables. There's a calculator trick for this as well. Okay, so if you're looking for numbers that multiply to 20 but add to 9, you can take your calculator, you can hit the Y equals button, and to find numbers that multiply to 20, uh, whoever used this calculator last, they were looking for numbers that multiplied to 28. So to look for numbers that multiply to 20, you would do 20 divided by X. So in the Y equals screen, I would do 20 divided by X. In the Y equals screen, 20 divided by X. And then after that, if I do second graph, second graph, now these are all the pairs that do it. So nothing times zero is 20. One times 20 is 20. Two times 10 is 20. Uh, that's a decimal. Four times five is 20. So these are all the pairs that would multiply to 20. So we're looking for what multiplies to 20 but adds to 9. So now we can go back and we can say, okay, which of these pairs would add up to 9? 1 and 20 multiplies to 20, but it adds to 21. So that's not the right combination. 2 times 10 multiplies to 20, but it adds to 12. So it's not the right combination. 4 times 5 multiplies to 20 and it adds to 9. So that's the combination we were looking for. So for this number, for multiplying to 20, we probably didn't need that on the calculator, but for some of the more complicated numbers to multiply to, it can be really helpful. So the two numbers we had were 4 and 5. So 3x plus 4, x plus 5. And you'll see some people show their work. This is how I often show my work. Um, in an X like this, I say what multiplies to 20 but adds to 9, and the numbers are 4 and 5. I usually show my work like this. You don't have to do that. It's optional, but this is what I typically do. So if you look at my answer keys, you'll see that. All right, how are your brains feeling? They're good? Doing okay? Right. Uh, would you like to see another one of those, or are you ready for a different type of factoring? We're good? Blank stairs? We're good? Okay. Uh, here's the next one. This is trinomials where A does not equal 1. So this is where we actually have a number in front of the x squared. And different teachers um, have different methods for doing this. I'm not sure uh, what Mr. Boyette did um, when he taught this last year. Maybe the box method, does that sound familiar, box method? Yeah? Okay, so we can do box method first. Um, there's a method that I like to use, it's called slide divide. Does that sound familiar to anyone? No, okay. So I'll show you both methods and then whichever method you're comfortable with is the method you can use, okay? So uh, for the box method, you always start with taking the number in the front. So whenever you have an A value here, um, and it's not a GCF, like in this one, we had a three in the front, but we were able to take it out. And then once we took it out, we no longer had a number in the front. 
So that's what made this like the more simple trinomial. With this one, we have a number in the front, but the six in the front is not a GCF. You can't divide six out of all three of the terms. So with this one, the six is left behind. It stays in the problem. So here we're gonna take the six and we're gonna multiply it by the negative two. And so for this problem, when we start it, I'm gonna look for what multiplies to six times negative two is negative 12. I'm gonna look for two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative one. Multiply to negative 12 and add to negative one. So if I'm having a hard time finding what multiplies to negative 12 and adds to negative one, I can type negative 12 divided by x. Negative 12 divided by x. And then I can hit second graph and then these are all of my options. So what pair adds to negative one? Negative four and three. So negative four and three. Okay, so for the box method, We always start with the first term and the last term in opposite corners. So 6x squared and negative 2. And then the numbers that we came up with make up that middle term. So negative 4 and 3 would be negative 4x and 3x, and those add up to negative 1x. And it doesn't matter which uh, squares you put those in. So negative 4x and 3x. And then from there, we just have to do a lot of GCF. So what's the GCF between 6x squared and 3x? 3x. What's the GCF between negative 4x and negative 2? Negative 2, does it have an x? Just negative 2, okay. What's the GCF between 6x squared and 4x? 2x. And then what's the GCF between 3x and negative 2? Is there anything in common? No. So if there's nothing in common, what number is always in common? 1. Okay. So if we were to write these factors, we would have 3x minus 2 and 2x plus 1. So that's the box method. OK. Um, you're welcome to do that method if that's what's comfortable to you. Similar idea, um, just a different way of thinking, is using the method I call the slide divide method. This is pretty common as well. Just kind of depends on who your teacher is, where you learned it. Sorry, I have lead. Oh, there we go. So the slide divide method starts the exact same way. So you still have the 6 going over to the negative 2, and you have negative 12, negative 1. You get the two numbers, negative 4 and 3. Um, but instead of drawing the box, you take the negative 4 and the 3, and you put them in parentheses the same way you would for the previous type of problem. So x minus 4, x plus 3. And then we say, well, we slid the 6 to the negative 2. We multiplied the 6 to the negative 2. So if I multiplied the 6 to the negative 2, then I should divide by 6 as well, because I have to undo that multiplication. So I'm going to divide by 6, divide by 6. So I slid the 6 over. I'm also going to do the opposite of that. 
So I've done the slide, I've done the divide. That's where the name comes from, slide divide. Then from here, these fractions need to be reduced. So how do you reduce 4 over 6? 2 over 3. So x minus 2 over 3. How do you reduce 3 over 6? 1 half. Okay. And then the last step is to take the bottom of the fraction and move it to the front. So slide divide bottoms up is the whole name. Some people shorten it to slide divide um, and let that be the whole title of it. Or you could say slide divide bottoms up. So 3x minus 2, 2x plus 1. So it starts off exactly the same. And then instead of dealing with GCFs, you deal with fractions. Two different methods, just kind of uses your brain slightly differently. So either one of these is good as far as what you, what you choose to do. I'll take both of them. Any questions on either of the methods? No, we're good? OK. Um, and then one last type of factoring. Hi. We have difference of squares. All right, so this one we're going to do 5x squared minus 80. And before we go any further, what do you guys notice about the numbers? 5 and 80. Anybody notice anything? Yeah, there's a GCF, GCF between 5 and 80. How can you tell? So maybe because the 80 is a multiple of 10? Would that be kind of your clue, make you think about that? OK. So if we take out the 5, what's left over? 1. So 5, take out the 5. We've got 1. And then we've got the x squared with the 80. If we divide out the 5, it's 16. Perfect. So now we have x squared minus 16. And difference of squares means that you have a minus in the middle of the problem. That's what difference means in math. You have a minus in the problem. And then squares means that both of the terms are squared. So this is x squared, so that's squared. And then it means over here you would have a number that's a perfect square. So your perfect squares, we'll write them over here. We've got like 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36. 6. So it would be good to have some recognition of these numbers, at least up to 100. So when you factor difference of squares, you end up getting two sets of parentheses, one with a plus, 
one with a minus. So the first parenthesis is going to be x plus 4. The second parenthesis is going to be x minus 4. All right. How are your brains feeling? That was a lot of factoring, but it should have been all review. Did it feel like it was all review? We've seen it all before. Okay. So your homework tonight is... Okay, what problem do we want to do? Number four? Okay, so number four, um, if we look at the number in front, is that one where it's like this and the three is a GCF we can divide out? Or is it one like this and the three has to stay because it doesn't divide? It has to stay. Okay, so if we look at number four, the three has to stay. If the three in the front has to stay, what do you do with the three in the front? Yeah, you multiply it by the number at the end, right? Okay, so we're going to take the 3 and we're going to multiply it by the negative 24. Negative 72. Okay, so we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 72 and add to what? Not negative 21. You can see it in the problem 14. So you're not, you're not doing math to get that. You always recognize it from the middle of the problem. So 14. Now, I don't know about you guys, but my multiples of 72 are not good. So I'm going to use the calculator. So we always hit the y equals button, y equals. And then we're typing in negative 72 divided by x. So y equals typing in negative 72 divided by x. And then what do we type from there? Second graph. So the second button is the blue button. So we're going to type second graph. And we're looking for pairs of numbers that are going to add up to a positive 14. Pairs of numbers that are going to add up to a positive 14. Is it 1 and negative 72? No. So if you look at the 4 and the negative 18, the, that combination looks good, but the signs are wrong. So flip the signs. So positive 18 and negative 4. So negative 4, positive 18, that would give you the 14. Okay, do you guys want to do the box method or do you want to do the slide divide? Slide divide. Okay, so we're going to put these numbers in the parentheses. We're going to do b minus 4, b plus 18. So we slid the 3 over. What do we do next with the 3? We put it under these numbers. So we slid the 3 over, which means we multiplied the 3. Now we're going to divide by the 3. Slide, divide. Okay. Do either of these fractions simplify? One of them does. Which one simplifies? The right one. What do we get? 6. Okay. B plus 6. Okay. The other one doesn't simplify, so what do we do with a fraction that stays a fraction? We bottoms up. 3b minus 4. Okay.
Should we find another one to do? Seven? Same kind? How do we know it's the same kind? It has the number in the front, right? Two goes into 72, but does two go into seven? No, okay, so it's the same kind because the two can't divide out. So we're gonna do two multiplied by negative 72 and what do we get? Negative 144. Okay. And what are we adding to? 7. Okay. So I'm going to hit my y equals. I'm going to do negative 144 divided by x. And then what am I going to do? Second graph. And I'm looking for one that adds to 7. Negative 9 and 16. There we go. So here's the combination, but we got to change the signs. Okay. So do you guys want to do box or do you want to do slide divide? Slide divide. Okay, so we've got k minus 9, k plus 16, okay? So we slid the 2, now what do we do? Divide by 2. Can we simplify either of the fractions? Yes. Which one? The one on the right. 16 over 2 is 8. And then what do we do with the fraction that didn't simplify? Put what in front? The 2. So 2k minus 9. Is number 14 like number 4 and number 7? No. no. But it has a number in the front. Why is it not like number 4 and number 7? So 4 goes into 56. 4 goes into 160. So it's not like number 4 and number 7 because the 4 is a GCF. You can take it out. And then it's actually one of the more simple ones. Okay. Do you guys want more time to work or is there another one that we should look at together? So you'd have B minus 4, B minus 10? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then make sure you still have your GCF in the front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. 